Rapunzel. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there lived a lovely couple. One day, the woman gave her husband the good news that she was pregnant. Her husband was so glad about the news that he said he would do anything for her. And one day, she told him that she was longing for some crunchy lettuce. If I can't eat some of that delicious lettuce from our neighbor's garden, I won't get any rest. So her husband went into the neighbor's garden to fulfill his wife's wish. But the poor man did not know that his neighbor was a very dangerous witch named Camilla. No one knew, but the witch was 150 years old. To look young, Camilla could only touch golden things, so she covered everything in her house with gold. She covered the plates, spoons, and forks, bottles, lamps, even the chairs on which she sat. Everything was covered with gold. And that evening, there was a knock at the door. It was the neighbor who had come to ask for some lettuce for his pregnant wife. Camilla said that he could take as much as he wanted from the garden. But under one condition. If your child has golden blonde hair, I'll take it. <laughs> the man didn't know what to do, but he foolishly agreed and prayed that his child would not have blonde hair. But a few days later, his wife gave birth to a beautiful baby girl with golden blonde hair. They called her Rapunzel. Camilla somehow knew the baby would be born with blonde hair. So, she took the baby from her parents and brought her home. The witch took very good care of Rapunzel. She combed her blonde hair, which grew a little longer every day. Camilla never wanted her hair to be cut, because she would take long strands of hair and cook it in a magical cauldron and turn it into gold. My magic turns her long golden hairs into gold. I'm set for life. <laughs> Yippee skippy. Deep in the forest, Camilla used her magic to build a huge, tall tower where Rapunzel would be trapped and her hair would be safe. The tower didn't even have stairs inside. It was just one small room with one small window. Rapunzel grew up in this room alone for 18 years, except for Camilla's visits. When Camilla came to visit her from time to time, she called on her from below. Rapunzel! 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 Let down your golden hair! Rapunzel would let down her long braided hair down the window, and Camilla would hold on to it and climb up into the tower. Mother! Why doesn't this tower have stairs? Why can't I step on the ground and play with flowers and animals? My beautiful golden-haired girl, this is the only way I can protect you from the evils of the world. There are many dangerous animals out there and all kinds of mean creatures. If something were to happen to you, I wouldn't survive. 
one day Rob, the handsome prince of the country, who was born on the same day as Rapunzel, took his horse for a ride in the forest. The prince heard the singing in the forest and listened carefully. This voice is such a beautiful voice. And followed the sound of the mysterious voice until he finally arrived at the bottom of the tower where Rapunzel lived. When she sang at the window of the tower, he immediately fell in love with her. He glanced around for a door to the tower, but could not find one. And just then, Camilla also arrived at the tower. So the prince hid behind the bushes because he knew of her reputation as a wicked, mean witch. Oh no, that's Camilla, the evil witch. What is she doing here? Rapunzel! 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 Let down your golden hair! Rapunzel let her long hair down for Camilla to climb up. The next day, the prince returned to the tower. But when he arrived, he tried to imitate the witch's voice and called up to the tower. Um, <clears throat> Rapunzel! Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. Rapunzel thought the voice sounded odd, but let her hair down anyway. Prince Rob quickly climbed up the hair, curious to find the voice that had sung so beautifully. Mm. Oh, what a hairy climb. Rapunzel was frightened when she saw him. Uh, um... <laughs> Who are you? How did you get here? I'm Prince Rob. I thought you might be in trouble because of the witch and all, and no stairs. Um, oh no. I, I, I'm i Rapunzel. I don't know you. My mother says strangers are dangerous creatures. Oh no. Get out of here! Don't worry, I'm not a dangerous person or, or creature. I simply heard your beautiful voice and wanted to see what the witch was up to. So, I guess I'm here to rescue you. The prince's words softened Rapunzel's heart, and she began not to be afraid of him anymore. Miss Rapunzel, would you like to go down off the tower with me to smell the flowers, take a walk in the forest, and meet beautiful animals? Rapunzel wanted to discover the life outside for years. So, she accepted the prince's offer straight away. got an idea that can help both of us go down the tower. When the next day arrived, the evil witch Camilla arrived at the tower and was about to call for Rapunzel when she saw her long blonde hair hanging down from the top of the tower. Hmm, I guess she saw me coming and let her hair down already. Camilla started to climb up to the top of the tower. And then she heard sounds of a horse. She thought someone might be nearby, but she didn't bother any further and climbed on because she wanted to reach Rapunzel as soon as possible. When she arrived in Rapunzel's room, she was shocked. Rapunzel wasn't there anymore. She had cut her hair off and run away from the tower. My gold! My gold is gone! No! No! Rapunzel! Rapunzel had cut her hair and tied it to an iron on the wall of the tower so she and the prince could climb down together. Camilla, alone in the tower, desperately touched Rapunzel's cut hair. No. No, 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 no! It doesn't work anymore because the hair is cut off. <sighs> the 
hair must have roots to turn into gold. In the meantime, Prince Rob and Rapunzel arrived at the prince's castle. And the prince told everything to his father and mother, the king and queen. The king said that he had heard the name Rapunzel from an old farmer and his wife. So the prince immediately took Rapunzel to the old house of the couple who had said they had lost a baby named Rapunzel. As soon as her poor mother and father opened the door and saw Rapunzel, they recognized her. My daughter, my dear daughter, you found us. The evil witch took you away from us. It has been so many years, but you're finally home. We are your real family. Rapunzel was very happy to meet her real family. And what do you suppose happened to Camilla, who was left in the tower with no gold? I'll find you, Rapunzel. I will hunt you for the hair that turns into gold. Once upon a time, in a faraway land warmed by the sun, there was a princess named Rapunzel. She lived together with her beloved Prince Rob in the most magnificent castle of the country. One day, Rapunzel was swinging on her hair at a tree in the castle's garden when she heard a voice she had never heard before. Slow down a little. I'm falling off. Huh? Who's saying that? I can't hold on much longer. I'm falling off. Am I daydreaming? What's that voice in my head? It's me. Me. Ugh. The voice Rapunzel had heard belonged to the hair clip. Were you the one talking to me? Of course it was me. Or did you think you'd gone crazy? The little hair clip started to walk. And Rapunzel, who had never seen a speaking hair clip before, followed. So, do you have a name? Of course I do. My name is Clapsy. So that means you've always been able to talk, Clapsy? The only one I couldn't talk to was you. Why is that? Little Clapsy stopped and began to tell Rapunzel everything. I was a beautiful young girl like you once, too. Of course, my hair wasn't as long and blonde and shiny as yours. Uh, whatever. One day, I went to pick up some black mulberries that grow in the dark forest. You went alone in the dark forest? Are you seriously going to interrupt the monologue of a talking hair clip? I found a giant mulberry tree, so I started to pick some mulberries. At that moment, I saw a bright, strange light in the forest. I was curious and moved closer to the light to see what was there. And in front of me, there stood a very old lady with a child. And that kid was you, Rapunzel. The lady was washing the kid's shiny hair in a river that was flowing through the forest. When the old woman dipped the kid's hair into the water of the river, it turned into gold balls. She took one of the gold balls in her hand and whispered something. Then the ball suddenly turned into a fan of gold. When the woman used the fan to cool her face, she became younger and younger. I couldn't believe my eyes. So I walked up to her and then she suddenly spun around. What are you doing here? What have you seen? Tell me now. Um, did that hair just turn to gold? I said. Then the old lady, um, who looked young, transformed me into a hair clip. What did you do to me? Oh no, oh no! <laughs> From now on, you're gonna be a hair clip that protects my little Rapunzel's hair. Is that true? You... It happened because of me? We have to break the spell. It was all the fault of that evil witch, Camilla. 
Only Camilla knows how to make me a human again. Rapunzel and Clapsy agreed to make their way to the tower where the witch Camilla lived. After they walked a little while, deep into the forest, they came across a river. To cross the river, Rapunzel built a small boat out of her hair. They jumped on the boat and went to the other side of the river. After running around among the huge trees, they finally saw the high tower. Here it is, the tower I was once trapped in. So, how are we going to climb up, Rapunzel? Hmm, let's see. We'll watch her from a safe distance. Rapunzel put Clapsy to the ends of her hair. On both sides, she attached huge leaves like a kite. Then she threw her hair into the sky and to the top of the tower. Alley-oop! Get along, little hair clip! Clapsy floated through the sky and looked inside. What she saw first was a broomstick that swept the floor by itself. A moment later, she heard Camilla talking to the broomstick. Broomstick, broomstick, my golden broomstick, broomy. Tell me, how am I going to get Rapunzel's hair back? <laughs> I can't live without my gold. Don't be sad, my lady. If you just look out the window, you'd see that magic hair. Clapsy went straight back to the ground. Your brain is swept away, Broomy. No, my lady, I'm telling the truth. If you don't believe me, just have a look. Clapsy nervously told Rapunzel that Broomy had seen her. Camilla went to the window, although she still didn't believe what Broomy said. When she looked down, she saw Rapunzel and Clapsy running away. Stop! Don't go! I have changed! I'm not like I used to be anymore! Rapunzel stopped for a second. Clapsy, did you hear her? She has changed! Maybe she will help us, but how? Rapunzel went back to the tower together with Clapsy. Camilla flew down from the tower, riding on Broomy. As soon as she saw Rapunzel's shiny hair, her eyes began to sparkle. She wanted to touch Rapunzel's hair and came closer. Don't come too close, Camilla. I missed you so much, Rapunzel. If I touched your hair just for a moment... We'll make a deal, Camilla. I will give you some of my hair, and in return, you'll turn Clapsy back into a human. Um... Ah, yes, of course, deal. Rapunzel! Give me your golden hair. Rapunzel took a piece of her hair and handed it to Camilla. Camilla reached out for the hair and... <laughs> Finally, a piece of hair that will make me young again! Hurry up, now it's my turn. Turn me back to a human. Ugh. Ugh. Ah. Camilla, who sat on Broomy and already flew away, shouted to them. You must make the dragon behind the Seven Summit Mountains smile. Only then can you turn back to a human being. <laughs> a dragon behind the Seven Summit Mountains? If Camilla says the truth, we will find that dragon for sure, Clapsy. Are you ready? We're leaving. My lady, is there really a dragon on those mountains? <laughs> of course there isn't. Rapunzel attached Clapsy to her hair, and they made their way to the mountains for a big adventure. Once upon a time, in the third cave of the Seven Summit Mountains, there was an egg 
protected by the little squirrel brothers. This egg was a dragon egg just about to hatch. Not far away was a country filled with the fragrances of flowers, the bright greens of the grassy hills, and the beauty of the princess Rapunzel. She was looking for the dragon that Camilla the witch had told her about with the help of Clapsy. She searched for it in the magic forest. Camilla had promised that if Clapsy could make the dragon laugh, she would become a human again. Rapunzel, I'm exhausted. Could I rest on your hair? Rapunzel took Clapsy and put her on her hair. Then she went on. While she was walking, an owl from the magic forest secretly followed her. <laughs> it's easier than you might think to blend into a forest when you're an owl. And after some time, she saw a beehive. Although some bees flew around the hive, it seemed to be empty. Hmm, do you think the queen bee left that hive, Clapsy? I don't think so. Look over there. Rapunzel was frightened by what she saw because a queen bee, three times her size, stood in front of them. Um, my dear queen, we are trying to get to the Seven Summit Mountains. Yes, indeed. Are we going the right way or the wrong way? I think we're on the right track, Rapunzel. Let's get away, hmm? Thank you, my dear queen. I hope you'll have a lot of honey this season. Rapunzel and Clapsy walked away quickly from the huge queen bee. On the street that they entered, they saw giant snapdragon blossoms. Rapunzel, those are snapdragon blossoms, aren't they? Yes, they are. Snapdragon blossoms that can open their mouths. Clapsy, shh, if we're quiet, they won't do anything to us. The noise-sensitive snapdragons looked like they were fast asleep. Rapunzel and Clapsy started to sneak past them with slow and silent steps. But then... Uh, 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 uh. Rapunzel tried to muffle the sneeze by covering Clapsy's mouth with her hair. But it wasn't enough. Uh, uh, oh no, this can't be happening. With Clapsy's loud sneeze, one of the snapdragons woke up. The snapdragon stretched out his neck towards Rapunzel. They didn't know what to do. They froze with fear. Then the snapdragon opened his big mouth and was about to swallow Rapunzel. But she stretched out her hair to a heavy rock grabbed it tightly, and then threw it into the mouth of the snapdragon. The snapdragon had to swallow the hard stone, and Rapunzel began to run through the other snapdragons. The others heard the commotion and started to wake up as she ran past them. Clapsy and Rapunzel were tired, but at least they got away from the snapdragons. And then a huge mountain appeared in front of them. After looking at it for a while, they realized that the mountain had exactly seven caves on it. I think we just found the mountain Camilla was talking about. We must be close to the dragon. Rapunzel saw a rock ledge on the mountain and threw her strong, long hair up. The hair wrapped itself on the top of the ledge, so Clapsy and Rapunzel could use it to climb up the mountain. Uh, oh, my heel. Did you? Ow, my hair. Uh. 
when they arrived in the third cave, they saw three tiny squirrels. Aren't they cute? Hello, little squirrel family. I'm Rapunzel. Have you seen a dragon here by any chance? Rapunzel, you cannot talk to them like that. They'll be scared. Okay, okay, I'll try again. Hello, little squirrels. Have you seen a cutie pie sugar sweet dragon over here? The squirrels shook their head to say yes. Then they went into the cave. Wow, didn't think that would work. Clapsy went into the little cave first, but she tripped on a small stone and rolled right into the cave until she bounced into something green. It was the baby dragon. Hi! Clapsy was frightened and didn't know what to do, so she jumped onto the baby dragon's tail. The baby dragon roared. We found the dragon Camilla was talking about. I can't believe it. <laughs> Yay! While Rapunzel was rejoicing, Clapsy decided she better stop crushing the dragon's tail. The dragon bent down um, to take a closer look at Clapsy. I think he doesn't like me. No, I'm sure he does. I think the problem is that he doesn't know how to express his feelings. Isn't it, dear dragon? Hmm. Let me give you a name. Drado! He's adorable! You'd better make friends with him, Clapsy. Remember, we have to make him laugh at you. But the baby dragon didn't like Clapsy because she hurt his tail. So Clapsy tried making a mess of Rapunzel's hair to make her look funny. <laughs> But this didn't make Drado laugh at all. Next, Clapsy tried to make a dragon shape out of a leaf. She tried real hard, but then it turned out to look more like a camel than a dragon. And Drado still wouldn't even crack a smile. Hmm, maybe he's hungry and doesn't feel like laughing? What do you think dragons like to eat? Dragon fruit? Aha, right! So let's find some dragon fruit for you. And after that, let's go to my castle. The baby dragon Drado started to like Rapunzel and headed to the castle with her. But not far away, the owl was still watching. It was a friend of the evil witch, Xenia. The owl was sent to spy on them by the country's most powerful witches, Camilla Zena, Hella, and Vega. He reported back to Camilla about the dragon. Yeah, I saw that dragon you didn't say existed. That's, they found it. But this is impossible. I lied about the dragon. How can this be? So Rapunzel has a dragon now. I know, it's unbelievable. Well, the four of us need to work out a plan to defeat all the princesses. Not a moment to lose. Once upon a time, when the autumn leaves fell down from the trees, the most powerful and vicious witches came together. Camilla, Xenia, Hella, and Vega. What am I? Decoration? Don't forget about me and their vicious owl. They aimed to defeat every kind-hearted princess in the world and rule with evil and cruelty. On a beautiful day, Rapunzel was painting a picture of the watermelons in the castle's garden. Hmm. Those watermelons look so good, don't they, Clapsy? I bet they taste just as delicious. So Clapsy went into the garden to taste a piece of watermelon. When suddenly, the baby dragon Drado appeared in front of her. He scared her with his evil gaze. So poor Clapsy slipped and fell directly into a watermelon out of fear. 
<laughs> Clapsy! Her clumsiness made Rapunzel laugh, but Drado still didn't even give a smile to her. Look at that huge watermelon! What's going on over there? One of the watermelons Rapunzel was drawing became larger wow. and larger until it was the size of a house. Rapunzel, Drado, and Clapsy couldn't believe what they saw. Did... did you see what just happened? Let's look inside. When Rapunzel and Clapsy went in, they saw a small room with walls decorated in various patterns of watermelon seeds. And also, a big glittering book. The Book of Princesses? There are other princesses besides you, Rapunzel? I guess so. Let's have a look at what's written inside. Whichever princess finds this book should read it with care, so you'll know which princesses live where. You'll never know when you need each other. Oh, other princesses? When all four princesses come together and unite, they will learn how powerful they are in a fight. Soon in the future, a new war will begin between princesses and witches, but who will win? By the time you finish reading, you won't have much time to seek all the friends you can find. Find Cinderella first and then get to the rest. And remember, my dear, kind hearts together are best. Rapunzel told Drado about what the book said and asked him to find Cinderella. <laughs> the baby dragon ah. took on this task and flew away in a hurry. <sighs> After some time, he arrived somewhere to meet the two mice called Mozzarella and Cheddar. He told them about Rapunzel's message and that the princesses had to meet under the lighthouse. <laughs> Mozzarella and Cheddar rushed to tell Cinderella, who immediately left to meet the other princesses. As she passed through the magic forest, she saw Freckled, who was picking blackberries. Hey, Freckled, tell Snow White that we need to meet up under the lighthouse. So Freckled went right away to tell Snow White. And when Snow White went off, she saw Seagull Ringo flying over her and called. Hey, Ringo! Ringo! You have to tell Mermaid Aria. All the princesses must gather under the lighthouse. So Seagull Ringo flew to the palace at the beach to tell the mermaid what he heard. But the mermaid wasn't in the palace. So Ringo stood at the pier and started to whistle. Dolphy, who heard Ringo whistle, showed up through the waves. Ringo asked Dolphy to swim directly to the little mermaid and tell her the news of Snow White. Then, Dolphy jumped into the water to swim to the underwater kingdom and told Arya what he heard. As soon as Arya understood what was going on, she quickly swam to the lighthouse on the sea's surface. When the mermaid arrived, her fishtail turned into human legs and she quickly reached the place where the princesses had gathered. Hi, I'm Mermaid Arya. So, you must be the other princesses? Arya, welcome. I'm Rapunzel. I'm Snow White. And my name is Cinderella. See, now we're all together. They talked until the sun took the place of the moon and told their stories to each other. At the end of the night, when the lighthouse lit up the sea, the princesses went into a forest area to discover their superpowers. It's time to show our power to the witches who want to spread evil around the world. 
That's right! We should get ready! Cinderella told the other princesses about her ability to speak with animals. Aha! So that means you can talk to my little dragon friend, Drado? A dragon? Wonderful! Wow! It's so cool! <laughs> Drado showed up. Hello, Drado. Can you speak my language? Yes! I'm glad to meet you. Wow! You really do talk to animals. So, what's your superpower, Mermaid Aria? I can make everything you see here move. The mermaid closed her eyes and put her hands together. With the scattered light around her, she lifted all the princesses into the air. The princesses were very impressed by this power. Aria took them off again. But Cinderella lost her balance and hurt her ankle. Ah, my ankle! My ankle hurts! Snow White touched Cinderella's ankle with both her hands. And with the heat in between her hands. This is brilliant, Snow White! My ankle is cured! I can stand up! And this is my superpower! With my hands, I can cure wounds! Finally, Rapunzel whispered some magic words to her hair and lifted them up to the sky. Her golden, shiny hair split into four parts. Each part bent down to a princess and spread like gold dust. Then, the parts became one again and formed a bridge that the princesses could cross. My superpower is that I have control over my hair. Wow, this is so cool! Snow White, Mermaid Aria, Cinderella, and Rapunzel felt that their powers together could defeat the evil witches. So on one side, there were four good-hearted princesses. On the other were the four evil witches who stood together. What about me? I'm standing here. And an evil owl. But remember, owl, in fairy tales, the good always wins over evil. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, on a night when wish lanterns adorned the sky, Rapunzel, Cinderella, the mermaid Arya, and Snow White were all under the ocean lighthouse. Each princess made a wish to make the world better, and the sun rose again. Rapunzel's tiny friend Clapsy woke up before all of the princesses set off to the magical forest to pick sweet cherries. The cherries were such a gorgeous red and so shiny that she couldn't help herself and ate a whole basket. Mm, 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 so delicious! Then, Clapsy noticed a baby deer passing through the trees. The deer had a hurt foot. Hello, baby deer! What happened to you? Come with me. I know someone who can make you feel better. Clapsy turned around and started to move forward when something about the baby deer changed. Its eyes turned glowing red. But Clapsy didn't notice the terrifying change and brought the deer to Snow White. Snow White had a magical power to heal animals. When Snow White approached the baby deer to heal its leg, the innocent-looking deer instantly transformed into the evil Queen Hela. <laughs> when Snow White saw Hela, she was very frightened. Hela, how did you find me here? Hela waved her arms magically 
and the ground beneath the princess split open, and Snow White fell into the depths of the chasm. <laughs> you will rot and grow ugly, Snow White. No one in this world can be as beautiful as I. Snow White fell straight down into a tunnel and was imprisoned in a dungeon. But up above, the other princesses noticed Snow White's disappearance, and they all set out in search of her. Snow White! Where are you? Cinderella was walking in the area where Snow White went missing. She had taken a few steps more when... Ah! She fell into the dungeon too. Then the mermaid Arya was sent a seashell by the waves crashing on the shore and listened to it. <gasps> what? They took them underground? The mermaid Arya gave the seashell back to the waves and immediately went to the magic forest. At the same time, Rapunzel and Clapsy had reached the spot where Snow White had disappeared. Snow White! Where are you? Where did you go? Rapunzel! Look! The last time I saw her, she was right here! Hmm... And with those words, the ground split again! And just as Rapunzel was about to fall in, Arya, who was racing towards her, realized what was happening and used her arms to force Rapunzel out of the way. Rapunzel hung in a bubble of air and touched back on land. When Arya reached Rapunzel's side, the chasm in the ground was still open and voices were coming from in it. We can't get out of here. Upon hearing the princess's voices, Rapunzel let down her hair into the pit to help them. Clinging to her hair, Arya lowered herself down. We're coming! Don't worry! Arya, look out! When Arya turned around to look, there she saw Vega and Hela. Heavenly, you've forgotten my powers, Arya. <laughs> when Arya least expected it, Vega began to shoot ink from her octopus arms at her. Arya generated a shield around her to protect herself. At the same time, above ground, Rapunzel's baby dragon Drado had eaten so many dragon fruits that he turned into a huge dragon! Seeing this, Rapunzel understood that Drado had gained a lot of power. Drado, help us! Drado stomped his feet on the ground so hard that... What's going on? It's going to cave in on us! Ah, we'll be trapped down here! Realizing this was her chance, Arya used all her strength and pulled open the dungeon bars and got Snow White and Cinderella out of the tunnel. But of course, once topside, the princesses weren't out of the woods yet. In fact, they were right in the middle of the woods. Xenia and Camilla were standing right in front of the princesses. Broom, sweep, 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 a rock monster to make. Beating these princesses will be a piece of cake. Camilla's magical broomstick, Broomy, swept up chunks of rock and placed them in front of Camilla. When there were enough rocks, Xenia used her powerful magic to create a giant stone man. The stone man stepped towards the princesses to hurt them. Rapunzel stretched her hair out like a rope and tied together the legs of the stone man. But while the stone man may have fallen, he was not beat. He got back up and began to run. 
I can't stop him. Mermaid Arya tried to use her power to the stone man in the air and sent him in another direction. But she couldn't. too heavy! I can't lift him! Next up was Cinderella, who began to call on the aid of all the animals in the forest. Hear me, beasts of the forest! The stone man was just steps away and about to hurt them, when, up in the sky, the dragon Drado showed his might. Drado heaved a breath of fire at the stone man. The stone man lost his balance, crashed to the ground, but wasn't injured. When the dragon once again began to blast him with fire, the stone man tore off a piece of his arm and threw it at the dragon. The mermaid Arya took control of the rock chunk and stopped it from hitting the dragon. Drado was enraged by this and snatched the stone man in his claws, flying to the end of a cliff. And he let him go. Falling from a great height, the stone man was smashed into pieces. The dragon Drado could be seen in the hills. The witches were so scared of the power of the princesses and dragon that they immediately turned and ran away. You can't defeat us when we stick together, witches. We got animals and a dragon and superpowers. But just a little love could have fixed everything. Then all of the princesses climbed onto Drado's back and flew to the ocean lighthouse. Good had once again triumphed over evil, but what really matters is teaching goodness to evil hearts. <laughs>